Whoa! Yo, how do you even get- Hey everyone, Henry Yellow here, welcome back. Today we are going to watch High Anxiety by Mel Brooks. Now I have already watched most of Hitchcock's well-known movies. Uh, I haven't watched Jamaica Inn, Torn Curtain, Topaz, and some of Hitchcock's other movies, but I think I should do just fine for High Anxiety. I should be able to get most of the jokes and references here. I'm actually quite excited for this movie because for most older comedy movies, I don't get the references because like, for example, in Blazing Saddles, when they talk about the, the Laurel and Hardy handshake, like, I didn't get that at all. So I think for, for this one, I should be able to get most of it. Uh -huh. The master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Okay, so it's more towards Vertigo. What? Oh, okay. Okay, I think I get it. He's afraid of heights. Oh, now watch his step there. Okay, stop. Goodbye. Barf bag. No! <laughs> oh, that's one way to express her joy. What is this all about? Sir, I'll explain in due time. You'll just follow me, sir. Please. This way, sir, please. This way. In the toilet? Okay, that's suspicious. I demand an explanation. How about this? Hmm? Oh, my God. What? Where are you going? Don't be so gauche. We're all doing it. I don't know what that was about. What a dramatic airport. Dr. Richard H. Thorndike, yes. hold it. Okay. Who are you? Oh, I'm Profi. I work at the Institute. Why the uh, picture taking? Oh, I love to take pictures. I'm very photogenic. I even developed them myself. That's not what photogenic means. Photogenic means he's he looks good in any picture. I got it. I got it. I got it. I sure am glad you're taking over as the new head of the asylum. We haven't had a real chief since Dr. Ashley died. Spellbound. When it was announced that you were going to take over, Dr. Montague blew us top. If you ask me, I think Dr. Ashley was a victim of foul play. Cool. I suppose there are no proper seats on the bus. The psycho neurologist <laughs> for the very, very nervous. Brophy here with the new head shrink. The intercom was just stuck in the middle of the road on the concrete. Wentworth, Dr. Philip Wentworth. Philip Wentworth, a pleasure. Ever since Dr. Ashley died, things have been happening here that are very strange. Wentworth! Oh. oh. I am Dr. Charles Montague. I was in charge here until you showed up. Ahem! Nurse Diesel. My right-hand man, woman. How do you do? Charlotte Diesel. Dinner is served promptly at 8 in the private dining room. Those who are tardy do not get fruit cup. Is she from Young Frankenstein? The proud blue hair? Well, Dr. Thorndike, may I say... Charles! Goodbye. You see what I mean? What I'm trying to tell My you words. is... Goodbye. <laughs> is Nurse Diesel the one in charge? <laughs> I got it! I got it! I got it! I ain't got it! Thorndike, my Richard. Professor Little Old Man. Lil Old Man, Lil Old Man. Lil Old Man. He has a seizure right in your office. What do you give him? Aqueous thorazine coupled with one cc of somadizing. And the most important thing? Never take a personal check. Hmm. Why? Because a check will bounce? Your predecessor, Dr. Ashley, hired me. He was going to make some very big changes around here, and then... Poof. Come here to the edge and you can look down! Look down! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> vertigo. <laughs> they should have added a vertigo effect. I don't know what came over me. High anxiety. You still <laughs> got it? If left unchecked, it could cost you your life! <laughs> Tomorrow, we have our first session of psychoanalysis. Professor, is it really Nessa? It is Nessa. I know it is Nessa. 
Don't tell me what's Nessa. It's definitely Nessa. <laughs> Did not expect that. Just before Dr. Ashley's untimely death, he was planning to make some very big changes here at the Institute. He wanted to change the drapes. Dr. Ashley felt that color has a great deal to do with the well-being of the emotionally disturbed. Maybe Dr. Ashley wanted to get rid of Nurse Diesel. That's a huge bell, like a cow's bell. Only 30 seconds late. You're so strict. Gentlemen. And Nurse Diesel. So what exactly is the rate of patient recovery here at the Institute? I'll have that for you in a moment. Once in a blue moon. Oh, that's very precise. We're dealing with sick people here. Dangerously sick people! Oh, I thought he got his hand. In and out, in and out, side, 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 side. Whoa. Was that necessary? How did they even show that? Welcome, the violent ward. Somebody just threw an enormous rock through my window. That's a boulder. <laughs> a guy like that should be put away. He probably is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Get it tomorrow. He's not going to get it ever. Nurse Diesel, are you all right? It was the TV. Sorry, it disturbed you. The TV. It was probably the TV. Probably the TV. Good night. That was no TV. <laughs> Maybe Brophy knows what's going on. Oh, dang. You're hurting me. You're, you're going too hard tonight. Oh, get off it. You live for bondage oh. and oh. discipline. Oh. Oh. This is some weird play here. Take your hand away from your nose and say that again. Dr. Montague is here to see you. Oh. What is up with the decorations in... Dr. Montague, I'm a little disturbed. I come across a patient who behaves in a rational and normal manner. This family is paying $12,000 a month to the Institute. He should have been released months ago. Well... <laughs> well... One moment he can be perfectly rational and lucid, the next... He's a living Looney Tune. Would you mind terribly if we examine it together? Well, you're in charge here. You can examine anyone you want. I used to get sharp pains in my neck and dreamt about werewolves. I never get those pains anymore. Tell me, Mr. Cartwright, frankly, if you were returned oh. to the community today... I feel pretty good. Ah! What is it? What's the matter? What's wrong? Oh, that pain just came back. He just shot a pin to his neck. I think the pain is going away now. I feel perfectly fine. Ah! <laughs> what is ah! it? Montague is an expert marksman. We'll examine you. No, no! I don't to help you! Ah! I don't understand it. I don't understand it either, Doctor. <laughs> They're crawling together with him. Give him a sedative. Make it a big one. A big one? A sedative this big, they'll kill him. It seems to be coming from somewhere up there. Yes, the North Wing. Who's in that room? A patient named Brisbane. I'd like to meet him. Oh, but he's hopeless. You don't want to meet him. I'd like to meet him right after lunch. Uh, Dr. Thorndike would like to meet Arthur Brisbane right after lunch. Uye one atwe ute ude eritge. Spoken code. <sighs> Falling. Ma! Mama! You Fa must fight it, do you hear me? Fight your fears! Yeah, fight it good, fight it good, fight it yeah, good! Good, 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 good! Oh! That's all right! Fight, 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 fight! <laughs> oh, you wanna fight, huh? Alright! Let's get a punching bag. I give you a Oh no! Oh no! High anxiety is winning! This is unseemly behavior! What are you doing? Stop! A referee. <laughs> Come on, boys. You came to see a fight, not a dance. Let's go. What? <laughs> Trying to help him overcome a very serious illness known as 
High anxiety. High anxiety. But you would not breathe a word of this to anyone, would you? I am shocked that you would think I'd say a word about this. Hey, everybody, guess who has high anxiety? <laughs> it only took him seconds. Mama, I am falling. <sighs> oh. It doesn't tell you much, Mama, I'm falling. Who was the Violet Ward? Norton, uh, this is our new chief, Dr. Thorndyke. What happened to your mustache? <laughs> As you know, we get some very violent patients in this wing. One of them reached out and ripped off half of my mustache. You can just r rip it off so perfectly. Hey, Norton, missing something? <laughs> <laughs> That's a serious case. That's Arthur Brisbane, the industrialist? He thinks he's a cocker spaniel. Cocker spaniel. I've never seen anything. Down, down, sit, sit, down, down, stay, stay. He was an animal of some kind. Of what the hell are you doing? Sorry, Brisbane, we don't do that with strangers. Bad talk. <laughs> he said we don't do that with strangers, so, so they do it with familiar people. How could a creature like that have the wherewithal to try to contact me by flashing a mirror? Good point. Unless that's not Arthur Brisbane, that's someone else. Or he's just acting, I don't know. I swear to God, I won't say a word, but I can't take it any longer. What we're doing is wrong. Don't you understand it's wrong? I'm trapped. I feel like I'm caught in a web. <laughs> yeah, the shadow like a web. Hmm. So that's why Brophy knows. He hears everything. You are free to leave the Institute this evening. I would say anything to anyone. Thank you. I have a feeling he's not gonna make it. I know you won't. Is the camera gonna hit her face? <laughs> It'll be funny. What? How did he even do that to his car? At first I imagined that they were gonna cut his brakes so he couldn't hit the brakes. Or maybe he'll stop by a motel and then get murdered. Oh my goodness, but apparently he got murdered by loud music. That's an um, interesting way to murder someone. Busted eardrums. That's a very strange symptom for a cerebral hemorrhage. If we receive any additional information about Wentworth, we'll call you. Enjoy yourself, for God's sakes. Get your mind off the Wentworth murder. Accident, accident. I want to get one last shot. Oh. Please, Brophy, not now. Hold it. <laughs> they were ready for it. Come to my room right after dinner. No, not tonight. I'm too tired. I'll let you wear my underwear. I'll be there. <laughs> Kinky. Excuse me, I thought I'd specifically requested a room on a lower floor. Mr. McGuffin called and told us to change it to the 17th floor. Montague sabotaged him. Anything I can get you, sir? Yes, please. I'd like a newspaper. Please don't forget, it's rather important. All right, already. Here we go, straight to the top. Quite a view, isn't it? Top of the hotel, you can't get any higher. We're pretty high. We know it. <laughs> We know we're high. Hey, Doc, look at this. I can see it from here. It's very nice. Oh. 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 I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know anyone was there. <laughs> Boy, if you would have gone over, you would have been smashed like corned beef hash. Brains would have splattered all over the lobby. Your guts would have been... Brophy, please. My newspaper. What happened to my newspaper? All right, I'll get your paper. I'll get your paper. Don't forget. What's so important about a lousy, crummy newspaper? He needs to change his attitude. Room 1702 just called down to remind you. I know! Get the newspaper! Get the newspaper! <laughs> oh my goodness. Psycho? Are we gonna see Psycho? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're having him a newspaper. 
He needs to be admitted into the mental hospital. Oh, that's genius. Ink from the paper flowing down. That kid gets no tip. <laughs> Dang right, he gets no tip. That was a great reference to Psycho. I love that. The ink flowing into the... And it's black too, so it's, it's like the black and white. Get away from the door. The drapes! Close the drapes! The drapes. Close the drapes. Wait, reference to 39 steps? Get down! <laughs> Bro, he just went down. Quick, make believe you know me terribly well. Terribly well. I, I, I... My name is Victoria Brisbane. My father is Arthur Brisbane. You're the cocker's daughter? But is he all right? He's very affectionate. He licked me. He humped you. I assure you, my father is just as sane as I am. <clears throat> he went into the Institute for arrest and has been a virtual prisoner there ever since. Why don't we meet downstairs later at the bar? We'll talk about it then. Fine. Later at the bar, that's perfect. See? There's no one here. There are no enemies. <laughs> Oh no, there is someone, an assassin. Winner of the Nobel Prize for his works in the use of chemotherapy on severe psychosis. Chemotherapy? I thought chemo treatment is only for cancer. 100 years ago, psychology was akin to witchcraft. If you want me to kill him, I'll kill him. I don't have to kill him, but I'd like to kill him. But the minute you say kill him, I'll kill him. I'd love to kill him. It would give me immense pleasure. Uh, Dr. Thorndike, uh, may I ask you a question? We just did. Sorry I'm late. Forgive me for bringing the kids. I couldn't get a sitter. It was only natural to arrive at the term P. 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 Envy. Then if a man envied a woman's... Melons. Balloons. <laughs> The female erogenous zone. You mean the balloon? Lower, lower, much lower. The kitty cat. The woo-woo. The woo-woo. Yes, the woo-woo. I mean, if you're going to bring kids to the convention, you should be ready for them to hear some psychological terms. Here we are, a B and B and B and B and B. Hey, it's song time here at the piano bar. I lay back and let you come forward and sing a few songs. How about you, sir? Oh, a piano bar. <laughs> the piano is the bar. I really don't sing. Not professionally, anyway. Yeah, come on, Doc. Oh, he's gonna sing High Anxiety. Do you know High Anxiety? Mm -hmm. You got it. High Anxiety Whenever you're near But then you take my hand my heart starts to soar anxiety. And remember folks, be good to your parents. They've been good to you. You win. Oh, oh let me get this. Who is this gentleman? It's Arthur. What are you talking about? That's daddy. Something is very, very wrong. Mm hmm What are we going to do? This is serious. He knows. Every time they show Nurse Diesel, <laughs> you see her pointy boobs. Her pointy balloons. We can't kill Thorndike without the police suspecting something. Ask me the queen, please. The police will be looking for him. Thorndike Killed is Wentworth. going to kill somebody. Oh? Mm. Finish your strudel. The camera angle is very creative, though. I'll give them that. Hey, that's beautiful. Dr. Thorndike, what about the seminar this afternoon? Oh. Now, how did that happen? Dr. Thorndike? Excuse me? <laughs> oh, wow. That's very realistic. Wait! 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 Wait, what? Door was the door was closing so slowly. That's the man! That's the man who shot him! Oh my god! Man is dead. Uh, this is me's gun, not mine! Gentlemen, don't go for your guns. I'm a psychiatrist. I can help you. No! That mask was super realistic. I thought maybe someone hypnotized him. Meet me in a half hour at the north by northwest corner. 
North by Northwest. <laughs> Pigeons are going to attack. Oh man. Oh, get out of there, man. I wonder what's worse, like pigeons attacking you with their claws and beaks or attacking you with their cloacas. Drown you in pigeon poop. <laughs> what's the point of having a roof on that shed, bro? What's the point, really? I thought a pigeon was gonna poop with its butt pointed on his, on top of his face. Wow, it's quite a design. And the clothes match too. One minute, you're singing love songs, and the next minute, you're pumping bullets into an innocent man. I am going to explode! Vicky, if... Vicky. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm just so close to my menstrual cycle that I could scream. <laughs> Who took this picture? How did they get this picture? Brophy. Wait a minute. I was coming down to the lobby in the elevator at the time of the shooting. Contact Brophy and have him blow up this negative, enlarge it, and prove that's me. How can you get so excited at a time like that? We've got to separate. Gosh, you're fickle. <laughs> I gotta keep enlarging this thing until we can clearly see the doc's face. Call me in an hour. Ooh, that is a big one. Wow. Whoa. Yo, how do you even get one? Big, he can't even reach it. Dang. That's the doc. Give us the negative, Brophy. You'll never get this. I'd rather die first. Oh, wow. Here. <laughs> that negative has been on the front page of every newspaper in San Francisco. I've got it. By every single newspaper in San Francisco. We'll need about $10,000 worth of change. Not gonna work. It's not the negative that has to be destroyed, it's Dr. Richard Thorndike. Oh, I get so hot when you are bad. <laughs> it accentuates her pointy balloons. Excuse me. You may kill Thorndike. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate this. Life is good. Dang, this guy is addicted to murder. Wait, this is the exact spot where she jumped. What movie was that? Vertigo, Vertigo. Right, Vertigo. <gasps> Whoa. Strangulation. Of course. Listen, mister, I don't go for this sort of thing. She's still listening on, though. <laughs> I am not going to listen to any more of this. I mean, I've had just about enough. What are you wearing? <laughs> You're wearing jeans? But they're tight. They're tight, all right. Tight on his neck. Oh, that's one sharp glass. You, you are an animal. <laughs> I know it was you all the time. I just went along with it. <laughs> I laughed. Did, did uh, you laugh? Did you reach Brophy? They said that he wasn't there. Oh my God! They know. We've got to get back to the Institute. We've got to find your father. Go to the Salvation Army and get... And get some clothes? <laughs> I want to see how they're going to get out of this. <laughs> Richard! Richard! What? Victoria doesn't even need to disguise herself. We have to be loud and annoying. If you're loud and annoying, psychologically, people don't notice you. Come on. I bought a cell in case on the plane they wanted to save you a Bloody Mary. A Bloody Mary? Sir, will you please put your bags right up here? What? What do you need the bags for? We have to x-ray them, sir. What do you think for smuggling dope in the celery? The celery is not for dope, it's for dip. What? Mm. 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 Oh, they really didn't notice that they had, he had still had a gun. What did I do? What did I do? What's to my you, crime? You beeped. I beeped. Right. Thank right. you, about it. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Please go. Please, right. go. Please. Right. Just go. Thank you. Sure, and then just decided not to check him. How could he forget he had a gun? Professor Lil Omen. They even killed the professor? Dead? Uh, Who's dead? <laughs> no, he's not dead. I sleep that way. <laughs> <laughs> Who sleeps that way? 
Yeah, it does. Brophy was taken to the North Wing. The poor chap had a mental breakdown. Brophy's not smart enough to have a mental breakdown. Brophy, have you seen Brisbane? Where is Brisbane? Where is he? They took him to... That's a delayed reaction. <laughs> They're gonna throw him off and make it look like suicide! <laughs> Wait, why are they targeting Brisbane? Why, why do they need to kill Brisbane? What does Brisbane have on them? I can't! I can't! Is... He suffers from high anxiety. It strikes one out of seven. I, I can't go on! Oh, don't worry. They've got him. I got him! I got him! I didn't get him. What can we do? Seriously? Well, that was... You dropped the dang gun. Wait, where's Monaghy and Nurse Diesel? Are they waiting up there or something? Have to jump! Why did you jump? He's going to fall! He's going to fall! He's just gonna fall on the next like stairs, you know. It's not that bad. <laughs> Yo that's a strong finger. I know what is giving you the high anxiety. Go back in your mind. Go back, my little baby. Go back while he's hanging there? Solving the trauma isn't gonna help right now. He needs strength in his fingers. Kid. He's making us prisoners. Shut him up! I can't take it. Oh that is the only thing that traumatized him. It's not height I'm afraid of. It's parents. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, this uh, it makes no no sense, and it's so funny. <laughs> God, it's all over. Oh. No way, if she starts flying. Fins, fins, I give up, I give up. I never really liked her. She never bathed. Where were they even hiding? Dad, this is the man I'm going to marry. Okay. Jeepers, Vicky. Pull the carrot back nice and slow. We're going too fast, we're gonna hit the wall. <laughs> Keep pulling back, maybe nobody will notice. <laughs> yeah, maybe nobody will notice. Honeymoon City. <laughs> when Nurse Diesel was falling, I thought for a moment that she was gonna sit on that room and just start flying. I caught quite a few references in this movie, uh, like from uh, Spellbound. I mean, basically the whole Psychiatrist Institute premise is from Spellbound. And then the high anxiety trauma is Vertigo. Then we have uh, a little scene from Psycho, a scene from The Birds. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Psycho, a mention of North by Northwest, and also a little bit of Dal M for Murder. You know, the little scene where Thorndike was being strangled and then he was breathing heavily into the phone. That's also very similar to in Dial M for Murder. I'm not sure if I accidentally gave out any spoilers when I was watching the movie, but if you have watched High Anxiety, I assume you probably have watched most of these Hitchcock movies too, so probably won't be a spoiler for you, I hope. There were a few parts which I don't really know whether it's just like a joke or is it an actual reference to one of Hitchcock's other movies which I've not seen before such as the guy suddenly calling Dr. Ton like into the toilet in the airport and then taking his shirt off or when Dr. Ton like arrived at the airport and then the woman was screaming as if she was going to stab him and I also like how almost always you know the characters are aware of it when there's music ominous music, the creepy music, suspenseful music coming in, and then the characters would be like, where's that music coming from? <laughs> if we had that sort of music, or if we could actually hear the type of music in our real lives, at least it would give us time to prepare ourselves 
if we hear horror music, we know something bad's gonna happen. If we hear happy music and we know, oh yeah, I mean, nothing's bad gonna happen. Everything's gonna be fine. It's gonna be a happy ever after. Oh, and also the camera shots. When the camera zooms in and you assume it's gonna go through the door or go through the window, but bang, it hits the window. <laughs> that was unexpected, but it was a good one. My favorite reference in a movie would have to be the psycho shower scene when the bellboy starts stabbing him with a newspaper and then after that the newspaper leaks the ink and it makes it look like you know, it's blood going into the drain because psycho is in black and white so the blood looks black when it goes into the drain and they made it look almost the same by having the ink come out from a newspaper and then uh, the shot of Dr. Thorndike's eyes zooming out and he says, that bellboy gets no tip. <laughs> that was my favorite reference in the whole movie. So which one was your favorite reference in, you know, high anxiety? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.